Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here and today we're going to be doing the sixth part of What If Naruto Was A Fox Sage Remastered. This will be the last What If part for this What If. In preparation for my new What If, What If Goku Was A Legendary Super Saiyan. I really did my best for you guys and I really think you guys will enjoy what I have in store for you. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro so without further ado, let's get into the video. Look at the way that I move, swag, disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Uh Sasuke slides his foot back and then raises a head. Once Dadera notices him approaching, he launches out two C1 bombs to try and subdue him. However, Sasuke slices through both and they explode to the side of his body. All he is left with are small bruises and a few little marks that really aren't anything to worry about. As he continues running ahead, a large cluster of the destructive clay is hurled at him. Several C1 bombs fly through the air to eventually detonate on contact with him. In one instinctive move, he blocks such bombs with his right wing and such wing gets blown to bits by the large explosion. However, Sasuke carries on running and strikes down with his sparkling blade. The ground below cracks and destroys from the high impact force alongside the high pressure since there's a very low area of contact for that force. Hidera manages to also dodge that attack and fall back several meters. His odd looking hands and speed out the C2 dragon that he eventually grabs onto. Since Sasuke has had more than enough time in the village, I believe that he could use the C rank lightning beast tracking fang jutsu. The jutsu I'm talking about will be on the screen now. Sasuke weaves several precise hand signs and a quite large hound like animal comes racing towards Deidara. It then opens its mouth and Sasuke is connected to such beasts with a string of lightning chakra. Deidara C2 dragon spits out several bombs of its own but they simply become duds when they come into contact with the beast. It then leaps up and past the large dragon to clamp down onto Deidara's vulnerable arm. It screams in pain but it's all an act. Once the jutsu disperses his entire body turns into clay and he is then revealed from within the dragon. After this, this he takes to the sky and Sasuke has to find a way to get up and fight him. The flying clay beast then drops down several bombs that Sasuke is forced to dismantle and deal with. Deidara also hurls down some of his own C1 bombs. To the Ichiha on the floor, it seems there's no options left for him. The sky is covered in these very destructive and explosive bombs. With the use of his intelligence though, he begins forming a theory. With the use of his last jutsu, all the bombs simply didn't detonate when they came into contact with him. It makes no sense, but he still has to believe in it. While the bombs are seconds away from hitting the ground and releasing waves of harsh energy, he unsheathes his sword and begins using the Chidori current jutsu. Trickles and bolts of electricity scatter across the battlefield completely and to his surprise, every bomb just falls and becomes useless. They simply fall and Sasuke is left to slice the ones that can hit his head. While in the air, Deira maniacally smiles as his clay dragon flaps around in the sky. He expects a beautiful scene of violent explosions, but all he sees is lightning. How could this be possible? His bombs are almost never duds, but for every single one to just be dismantled like this, it really makes him furious. He aims down his finger and the dragon soars down from the sky. Sasuke prepares himself and makes a bold leap into the air. He also flaps powerfully to gain even more distance into the air. Once he does this, lightning chakra engulfs his blade as he starts using the Chidori sharp spear jutsu. This jutsu increases the overall length of his sword by enormous amounts if he likes and he is able to reach even Deidara with it. He slices a large dragon in two and manages to get in close range and place Deidara in a Genjutsu, however this is not Deidara. Behind part of the fallen clay dragon, he forms a C4 bomb that grows to enormous size and eventually detonates. A small bomb scatter through the air and Sasuke lands on the ground to see these small bombs in the sky. Due to his Sharingan, he is able to form a plan and keep himself alive. He forms a quick shadow clone that acts as if it's being killed by the small bombs. Deidara is overwhelmed with glee from this and just smirks through it. Sasuke's body seems to disintegrate from the cellular level explosions, however he then just poofs away. Sasuke is able to use his lightning chakra to make any small explosion that comes in contact with him a dud. He can see the bombs but they flow through the air so swiftly that there was no way he would have been able to evade them. They're currently in his body, yes, but they have been neutralised and simply flow around his body. Deidara thinks that he's won the fight but then Sasuke comes out of nowhere and flaps towards him with the flapping Chidori. Deidara sees this in the corner of his eye but inevitably gets pummeled by the Jutsu entirely. He rolls across the battlefield but his body starts gaining weird black veins. Sasuke sees this with his Sharingan and with this he begins to run. The veins become more and more prominent and Deidara simply doesn't care if he runs. The explosion is far too large for simple running. He laughs to the sky as he reveals his ultimate jutsu that also takes his life, the C0. The explosion is phenomenal and Sasuke gets launched high into the air. His final wing burns away and he reverts to his base form while in the air. 
He is then seen falling from the sky but luckily someone is there to help. A red fox jumps as high as he possibly can and reaches alarming heights. Fennec grabs his body and lands into the forest with a nice and sturdy landing. He makes one good roll before dropping Sasuke who seems seriously beat up. Sakura gets right onto it and manages to heal the majority of his injuries. However, he is left with some minor pain in his skin and a few small bruises but it isn't all that bad. Naruto says, did you win? He self-destructed, he will be of no threat to the mission any longer. However, his friend exits before our fight even began. In the distance, Naruto has actually managed to catch a glimpse of someone seemingly running away from them. He can see there's red clouds across a black cloak from a mile off and he restlessly runs after them. Once he gets close enough, he realises that it's Itachi and once he stops, he immediately brings his eyes down to his feet. Once he does this, Itachi simply chuckles and skillfully stops himself from running any further. Naruto goes into imperfect stage mode because he has to be quick so he isn't able to escape. His hair is quite scruffy and he has some clear fox features across him. His whiskers become much more prominent and he prepares for battle. Naruto speeds off from his starting position and foolishly swings ahead with a telegraph to right. Tatachi barely moves and makes a subtle step backward that somehow allows him to evade the attack entirely. Naruto fires again with a left knee but Itachi blocks with both arms and simply doesn't budge. Naruto didn't expect for him to be this strong without the use of any jutsu. Itachi then blurs forward and even Naruto's natural energy perception isn't enough to evade this. He gets elbowed in the side and Itachi uses just enough force to crack one of his bones. Right after he swings wildly with a wide strike to his side, he then snaps two more ribs and forces blood right out of Naruto's mouth. Then Itachi lands two precise kicks that literally crack bone on impact with their respective bones. These hits just completely wreck Naruto and puts into perception how strong Itachi actually is. While Naruto is sliding back due to the power of the kicks, Itachi uses his Phoenix Sage Flower Nail Crimson Jutsu that launches several fire shuriken engulfed in fire chakra. On the web, Naruto retrieves a kunai and readily imbues it with his invigorating Sage Chakra. By this time, a shuriken is less than 30 centimeters away from his head. In one swift and impressively fast swing, the shuriken gets sliced in half and both halves scrape past his head. He then slices and destroys the following kunai with his own chakra. Once they fall next to him, Wind Chakra then enhances the kunai. He makes a powerful forward step before hurling the kunai forward to Itachi. It soars and cuts through the air, leaving a pure and sharp trail of wind as well as wind chakra. Itachi catches the kunai with two fingers but visibly used quite a bit of effort. You are strong, Naruto, but you are looking in my eyes. Naruto tries to look away but all he sees are Sharingan glaring at him. They seem to almost increase in size and Itachi's body transforms into a thick cluster of violent flapping crows. He is awoke by the deep roar of Fennec. His sage mode has completely faded and he has just been standing with a blank face. I swear I had him. He was here and I was fighting. Where did he go? Naruto shouts in annoyance, believing that he has lost them the mission. Oh please, just look past your mistakes. If he was here means he literally can't be far from here. We just have to search. Fennec analyzes logically, surprising Sakura but not Naruto, he's way too familiar of his evident rationality. As they begin to exit, Sasuke unsheathes his sword and says, I know where he is. Well good, let's go and get him then. No, I won't let anyone take my life purpose away from me. Sasuke almost mumbles, looking down and laying the tip of the sword down on the mud below. Sasuke didn't do this, we have him. We can finish the mission and capture him, I know we're strong enough. Out of nowhere, Lightning Chakra rushes down his sword and almost reaches out to form a second longer blade. He raises the sword quickly and stabs it directly into Naruto's chest. I'm sorry, he says while his curse mark starts to take shape. Fennec's claws engulf in fire as Sasuke knocks out Sakura with a slash and neck tap. He throws a wild swing at high force and Sasuke just about dodges since he's very far away from him. Once the large red hand of the fox slams into the ground, it literally forms a small crater and causes the tree to light up in violent flames. This definitely strikes a bit of fear into him, but he uses his newly formed wings to make his exit by flight. Fennec takes a powerful step forward but leaps several meters into the air. Fireball Jutsu, Fennec exclaims, releasing the large fireball at him. It almost reaches Sasuke but he smartly drops right under the flames and flies straight at high speed. Fennec is unable to resist and simply lands back in the forest and Sasuke has made his escape. Once Fennec returns back to meet Naruto and Sakura, he wakes up Sakura and she manages to heal Naruto and herself. They are both returned to a somewhat healthy state and are happy with that, however Sasuke is gone and they have no idea what to do. What is confusing is that it seemed that Sasuke knew exactly where he was going when he left. 
How could he have known where Itachi was? Before the team tried to regroup and smartly pick up the pieces, Toby arrives. Naruto is immediately on his toes once he sees the Akatsuki cloak. His body bubbles with rage once he notices a face on black and red cloak. You pay for trying to kill Gara and Sasuke, Naruto declares, clenching his fists in fury. Surprisingly, a bubbly cloak engulfs his body and he gains one loose tail. He is still able to control himself from just attacking his friends, but his anger towards Toby is only heightened. However, Fennec steps in front of him and says, wait, he's strong, we might have to fight together. Naruto's immediate reaction is to brush this comment off and charge at the Akatsuki member, but after a little analysis, he knows that this is the way to go. He wants to kill this Akatsuki member, he doesn't care about what he has to do to accomplish this. Fennec stares up at Toby but doesn't look into his eyes. He roars at him before leaping off the ground and swinging up towards him. The tree branch below Toby just completely scorches and burns off, but Toby seems completely fine. This is because Fennec's fiery claws literally phased his body. From the ground, Naruto uses the air bullets jutsu. All of these precise air bullets go right through him and destroy the tree situated directly behind him. You're gonna have to try harder than that to take me down. Fennec lands and uses agility that Naruto has never seen from him before. He leaps off from a tree trunk and strikes down on Toby with a strong kick, however Toby evades with a flip over the attack. Once Fennec clashes with the tree, it bursts up in flames and then Fennec shouts, Naruto, now! Even through his partially blind rage, enough training gives him enough info as to what's going on. He runs directly up the large tree on all fours, his claws allow him to clamp down on the bark and explode off for another stride. He lands on Fennec's back and his cloak slowly fades, Fennec begins his jutsu and Naruto floods his body with his own wind chakra. Scorch release, fireball jutsu, Fennec blows out an enormous fireball that completely coats the forest in scorching red flames. Toby is forced to go into his own spatial dimension and evade the incoming attack. Once the flames start to fall back a little, their enemy is nowhere to be found. Naruto falls off Fennec's back and they both land back on the ground. The forest is covered in roaring flames and Sakura is just taken aback by the destructive capacity that these two fighters possess. It also puts into perspective how weak she is compared to them. All Sasuke had to do was tap her in the neck and she was out completely. These events now motivate Sakura to ascend past her thought to be limits and match her two comrades. Sasuke arrives at where Tachi is located and Kasame is simply waiting outside. Go ahead, you told me to wait here. Kasame explains, being very calm about the subject at hand, it's quite peculiar but Sasuke just lets it happen. He enters the Uchiha hideout and he sees Sasuke. You came. He states calmly, slouching in the dark stone throne. Sasuke walks in with his Sharingan glowing across the hall and says yes, yes I did. He unsheathes his sword and begins using the Shidori Katana Jutsu. This makes his sword much more durable and formidable as a weapon in general. After doing this, he slightly tilts his sword into a diagonal position and charges at his brother. After many, many years, he can finally fulfill his life purpose and live in peace. His overwhelming will to fight and win fuels his every movement. He swings back as he comes into contact with Itachi and swings wildly, it's a perfect hit but Itachi just splits into weird crows but the throne behind him is completely severed. As the stone chair slips down, Sasuke turns and notices that Itachi is completely fine and just situated behind him. Why won't you look into my eyes? Who told you about my eyes? Itachi asks, impressed by his brother's skill. You don't deserve to know anything about me. You don't even deserve life, Sasuke declares boldly, retrieving a large Fuma shuriken. As he does this, electricity engulfs the weapon and toughens it. He steps forward and hurls the shuriken up at high speed. Itachi simply steps to the side to evade the hit, but it never actually hits him somehow. The weapon abruptly stops directly ahead of him, then gets yanked back by Sasuke. He's tied it to his hands by wire, another skill that Itachi is actually surprised of. He saw the wire but never expected him to pull it back. Sasuke spins it back and allows to gain more force from the power of the spinning. He hurls the shuriken back at Itachi but this time it's much faster. Itachi just about ducks under the large shuriken and some of his hairs chip off from the strong current above him. This weapon wedges into the rock wall behind and Sasuke simply drops the wire. He steps forward and begins using his sword once again, but he uses the Shidori Sharp Spear Jutsu. As he charges at Itachi, he aims the sword forward and it hurls towards him. It actually stabs through his stomach from the unexpected speed and forces him back about a meter. To cause even more damage, Sasuke pulls up on his lightning blade to deepen but also worsen the cut. Sasuke sees that the end is near, Itachi begins panting and he grabs the wound in agony. However, Itachi uses the Matarasu to unleash a harsh wave of black flames and heat. The attack is powerful and Sasuke just about manages to evade by getting very far behind. Flames stop ahead just ahead of him then die down eventually. 
Once they stop, Itachi takes a step forward and Sasuke's curse mark starts to grow across his body. Sasuke rummages through his pouch and retrieves two sharp kunai. They get enhanced with lightning chakra and Sasuke grows large and flapping wings behind him. You're getting serious, so should I, he calmly announces, revealing his man Gekyo Sharingan. They glare across the entire hall and Sasuke prepares for a battle that he's waited for so, so long. 